What's up, everybody? It's LG Set here. You're listening to The First Mint, a podcast where I talk about NFTs and the world of Web3. The podcast comes out every Monday morning and occasionally on Wednesdays. If you like this content and you want some more, feel free to visit our Twitter page at The First Mint. This past Saturday morning, I saw someone in the First Mint Discord post a link to a tweet. The tweet was from an account called NFTs Anonymous. It said, NFTs are actually in jeopardy of NGMI. Not going to make it. This is not a shit post. This has abruptly become our reality. NFA, not financial advice. But don't pretend this can't all go to zero. An interesting take. And given, you know, the, the state of NFTs, the market's going down, dapper, everything, you, you probably couldn't blame them for that sentiment. But the replies were slightly less tempered of a reaction than what I just said. And they poured in instantly. This is like saying blockchain technology, the internet, can go to zero because of safe moon Shiba Mars coin or some shitty websites, said Zeneca, a man who has accrued 278,000 followers in just this past year on Twitter. We literally go through this every four to six weeks or whatever the cycles is. Tweets like this do nothing but help the drawdowns become more volatile and the ones who suffer the most are the younger, less experienced trader investors, said Wades, a well-respected NFTOG and former guest on the First Mint. But even the buyers are solely here to flip for a profit. 99% of the space is. Most times they get wrecked, but almost nobody is just buying NFTs and enjoying them anymore. 99% of the space is here to strictly offload the hot potato to the next bag holder, said Nathan G. Eth paraphrasing Gary Vaynerchuk and then linking to him. Heck, even our own Stone Cold from the First Mint got in on the fun. He said, bro, this dude is a proven clown emoji. To which NFTs Anonymous actually responded by going to Blake's profile, taking a photo of his face, and just responding with just the photo. To which Blake then responded, can only imagine how ugly yo ass really is. The original tweet in its comments, the whole situation was ugly. Kind of like literally any market whatsoever right now. It's bleak out there. And honestly, by the time you're listening to this, it might even be worse because it'll be Monday morning. So today, I don't think we need to go over how basically every type of finance right now is quite uh, nasty and not looking very good. Rather, we'll look to the future a little bit. And think about where that next wave of crypto and NFT adoption might come from. A theme we've covered many times, but this time maybe from a bit of a different angle. We'll talk about how we can get there and what will be left when we do. This is The First Mint. Coming up this week at The First Mint, we have two fantastic partnership spaces for two really exciting drops. Tuesday, we have the Candy Digital Drop for the next lineup from MLB. Very exciting. Some great stuff from their blog. Everybody who bought a pack previously uh, for lineup one and two is getting a pack this week for free. So it's very exciting. And Burning is challenge is starting on MLB. So anyways, we're going to be covering that, chatting with Usman, hopefully. So that's going to be Tuesday morning. And then Thursday is the second digital Hero Drop, the Batman Multiverse, DC Multiverse, honestly one of my favorite projects. It's been so fun to be in that community. And uh, shout out to everybody we met in the community as well. It's been a really great time for the first minute to be there and help build that. And shout out to our team at Hero, our, 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 our partners at Hero. But this week is the second digital drop. 50 lucky people from the First Mint are going to be getting uh, allow list access, pre-sale access to that where they can buy up to 10 packs. So it's a very exciting drop coming this Thursday. We will also be on Spaces for that one, uh, maybe with Warner Brothers. I'm not sure if they'll be there, but hopefully they will. And it's going to be a damn good time. So check it out all on Twitter Spaces at the First Mint. So before we get into it today, and kind of on the note I left you with before the intro, um, I want to take a minute to talk about mental health. Yeah, mental health. I know it's kind of, you could say it's overdone at this point, but it's very important to talk about. I know the awareness is out there, but it's always worth, um, you know, kind of going over the fundamentals. It's springtime. That's when people are actually most vulnerable. It's, It's reported that the springtime is actually a time where there is the highest suicide rate, which kind of seems odd, right? There's more light outside. 
you'd think uh, more sunlight equals more happiness. People are going outside more, but uh, apparently, or maybe, you know, the season of change is a catalyst for depression. I find right now is especially challenging, right? There's so much going on in the world, war, social division, financial turmoil, recession, climate change, all that. And like I said, NFTs aren't doing well. You know, I don't want to ramble on as an NFT podcast, talk about mental health, but it is it is important, so bear with me. If for whatever reason, everybody's got their different reasons, and it happens a lot, it happens to everybody. If you're feeling alone, scared, depressed, there is tons, tons of help available. And you don't need to be alone in feeling that way or being the only one that knows that you feel that way. I'm not going to tell you how to get help. There's plenty of ways. You just literally just Google it. There's so many things that are available what I will recommend is to take that first step towards it. If you are feeling low in any kind of way, it's totally fine to feel that way. But, you know, text text that friend you wanted to text or take that first step outside for the walk you've been meaning to go and get some air, whatever that is for you. You know, the, everybody knows the things that are good for them when it comes to mental health. For me, mental health, I've always honestly seen it like a muscle that you have to work out. And you and you alone know the right way for it to work out and how to stretch it and move it. And you can watch YouTube videos about it, about the right techniques to do it. There's, there's plenty of resources. And when you work it out often, you feel great. But when you're lagging, you feel like shit. And it's even harder then to get back on the horse. So if you're feeling that kind of way, you know, just take that first step. And also, the reminder... Even if you're not feeling that way, or you feel like that sometimes, to check up on your friends online or in real life. Even the ones that seem to be okay, because people, and especially men, come on guys, I know you know this, we tend to suffer in silence when it comes to that, this kind of stuff. So, I don't know, hit up your old pals. And it might actually make you feel good too to do that. Anyways, let's move on. Something... Uh, <laughs> Maybe depressing, uh, but not nearly as serious, let's say, when we actually zoom out from it, is the current state of NFTs, right? And this show is kind of about how NFTs can grow and what it's going to take for that next big round of adoption. So we're going to do a few things today. And the first one is go over the current conditions. A recession is coming. Rates are up. Everything's being hiked. The markets are down. All of them, literally everything. And the actual social state of the world is, is like I said earlier, bleak. In NFTs, it's no different. Big prices are down hard. Many people feel that the market is stagnant. We had the one-year anniversary of apes with the land deal, and I think that kind of messed everything up. Honestly, it left a weird taste. Things have not been the same since last weekend after that sale. And we're also seeing a lot of chatter on social and in discords, very similar uh, to, the, to the anecdotes from earlier, and where people are feeling tired and that this current phase is kind of done. And, and maybe it is, right? It feels like many new projects in NFTs right now are kind of the same format, the same utility and rewards, very similar roadmap of land and fractionalization and rewards. And worst of all, it does maybe feel less fun for some. I still have a fantastic time every day. This is still way better than not NFTs, but it maybe isn't at the same level of fun. Maybe it was 100% fun before and now it's 80%. And people saying the market is purely for profit hunting, well, maybe it always has been, but there has definitely been times where it's been maybe a bit more about vibe shopping, let's say. The biggest projects, like Apes and Cool Cats, have been experiencing kind of different versions of what Top Shot did in a way, just stretched out over a bit of a longer period of time. Like Cool Cats went for this huge home run with actually launching their Cool Pets game. And the execution totally flopped. It took a month to actually get it off the ground after the launch date. The hype died off. Cool Cats peaked at like 16 or 17 Ethereum each and are now down to four. People are still playing and enjoying the game, of course. The community's still there. But it's kind of turning into a, what could have been. And the ape land, the deeds, my God, what happened? There's so little if info that was given or has been given since and a lot of kind of misleading practices, bad communication, a once untouchable vibe now tarnished, although maybe not for too long. Does this sound familiar? Either of those examples? Now, both of those, you know, uh, faux pas is too much of a, a word, but let's just say um, new narratives are a result of the projects needing to ma mature, to grow into a better version of themselves and become more accessible to more people and in themselves become a bigger brand. Yet the community and market have rejected some of these practices. 
often based on kind of the, a, a relatively small or perceived mistake. Well, like Cat's game. It was super delayed. Or really, you know, not just mistakes, but anything else that makes the price go down. So is this phase, you know, now that these the top projects are trying to move on to something else and having trouble getting through it, is this does that mark the end of this phase? Or are we in the middle of two waves? Or zooming all the way out, are we at the start of the next true crypto winter and the first for NFTs? Let's take a quick history lesson. If you listen to the show before, you've heard me say this, you've been in the game for a while, you know this, but we're gonna go a little history lesson, the last five years of crypto. Going back to the ICO boom of 2017, which, uh, just go look it up. It was, it was a crazy time where every day a new coin was coming out with these new kind of perceived things that the coin would do and go and build. And a lot of them either turned into rugs or were crap or both. And But some, some of them prevailed. And then around the same time, you had CryptoKitties, also kind of an interesting use case of what you could do with crypto. Even the term NFT then, I don't think in the community was quite as, as prevalent as it is now. Obviously, CryptoKitties was just a, a thing, another type of token on Ethereum, or a new type of token, let's say. But overall, all that stuff, within a year, totally died. Crypto died. At the peak, January 12th, 2018, the start of the year, Ethereum was $1,448 USD. A year earlier, it had been $9, so an enormous run-up. But a year later, January 12th, 2019, it was down to 124, 1448 to 124. And it wasn't until July 15th, 2020, 18 months later, that it even came back above 300. And not until February 2nd, 2021, that it reached its all-time high again and blasted by it a full three years in between those highs. You know, we often say in NFTs, we always joke about how like a week feels like a year. Like when I went on vacation, it felt like I went to freaking Narnia or something like that. Like so much time passed in NFTs, or I guess rather that I, I came out of the cupboard from Narnia and Narnia kept going. Anyways, that time, if you're in crypto, if you're trading Ethereum or building stuff or whatever, that must have felt like decades. And it was called Crypto Winter. Literally, it was Crypto Winter. Many people left during that time. Probably a lot of the people who were there for the money. But many also remained. And they built the DeFi, Decentralized Finance ecosystem that blossomed into DeFi summer in 2020. All of the governance tokens coming out for all those wonderful protocols and people making some a bit, little bit of cash for having used those protocols. And the NFT ecosystem that became the building blocks of this current boom was also built out. Sandbox, Top Shot, Punks, all of that was in development during that time. It took years. Of course, during those three years, there was still a market. Of course, there's, there's big players like Pranksy that came about during that time. But it wasn't like it is now. Nobody was really making millions and not many people, not, and it's not like a lot of people were making millions if there were a few that were. So what many people are wondering now, including me, is are we at the start of another one of those winters? Did we overdo it in this last phase? And will the next iteration be something, yet again, completely different than when it was three or four or however many years ago? Are we on the way down the wave to a long, dark swell in between waves? Or is this just another bump? And next week, we'll be right back. After all, NFTs are crypto for normal people, right? So unlike the ICOs and the DeFi and all that, this is actually like fun and cultural. Come on. And they might have a lot more staying power. There's so much money invested, so many athletes, brands, personalities invested here. So even if NFTs go into a winter, there's so much invested that a lot of those projects are going to find a way to make it work and to continue. Another quote tweet I saw was from the great Mando underscore NFT. It said, Historical significance. Finally, people are discounting historical significance due to supply. Stop fighting 2018 versus 2021. Understand 2021 versus 2040. This is the birth of a historically significant movement. Communities which survive will be significant for decades. A nice tweet, a nice thought, absolutely, that communities will survive this. And I guess you could say that from the last crypto winter, that it was communities banding together to build really interesting stuff that made it survive. Now back to the original question, how do NFTs grow? And not just grow like slowly, grow rapidly. How do we get 100 million people into NFTs? How do we do that? How do we make that leap? Well, for a hint of that, again, let's zoom all the way out from the rest of crypto. 
Because beyond DeFi during that time, so much more happened outside the crypto world, in the institutions. Today, as of this recording, I heard, and I posted in the first minute earlier, that Instagram is taking on NFTs that's coming tomorrow with a pilot project or pilot program. But that's nothing. Nothing compared to what's about to happen. Crypto is about to be everywhere. And about, don't think of about in like two weeks, about as in years, but sooner than later. The same way that phones replaced like our wallets and cameras, I think crypto is going to replace ATMs, our bank accounts, our receipts. All the major funds have either put Bitcoin on their balance sheet or are talking about it. I saw a report on NASDAQ about how Fidelity is being pressured into it. They manage $4.5 trillion in assets. And in Argentina, apparently you get 20% of your salary in Bitcoin if you want. You can just ask your employer to do that. And the list goes on for that type of adoption, true institutional adoption, not so much in, hey, let's all go make a bunch of money, but more like, no, you know, Bitcoin is like, you must have it. It is a normal thing to have. And that's been a long time coming for Bitcoin. Bitcoin didn't go mainstream until like, I don't know, well, it's been mainstream for a, lo- a while, right? It took a few years. We've known about it for a long time, right? Like when's the first time you heard about Bitcoin? 2013, 14, maybe earlier, maybe after. And the one thing that just about preceded the 2021 surge of NFTs, the start in, of the year and through most of the summer, was the crypto surge. Institutions started adding crypto to their balance sheet in early 2021. And that was just another chapter in the long story of Bitcoin. And it was probably accelerated, of course, by a huge influx of cash from stimulus checks and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, people in companies probably just wanting to YOLO a little bit. It's taken a long time, and I think NFTs are on a similar timeline, but way further behind it. Even if you look at it a matter of years for each one, like Bitcoin, that that white paper, that was launched in like 2010, and now in 2022, finally are these companies, big companies, saying like, yes, we will buy some Bitcoin, countries mandating or that people can be paid in Bitcoin if they want. 12 years. NFTs were only just like started in 2017. So even if you look at it as a 12-year period, they won't be that level of mainstream until 2029. Now, obviously, it's apples to oranges, not the same, but there's, there's a lack of comparable metrics there. NFTs need tons of boom and bust cycles. They need to be called a scam for people to laugh at their downfall, for many people to cycle through over time. I did a pod recently about where NFTs will be in 36 months from now, and I singled out creators. And not just like artists, but like true creators, people that are in creative disciplines or need to be creative for their job. We need those creators. They need to come in. We need more points of view. We need more diversity. We need more ideas. We need those creators to come in with no financial incentive that are just looking to add some tech to what they do or to do something in tech. Architects, musicians, travel agents, people that need to be creative in some way for a living, not just artists. Right now, these people are scared or they're not caring about NFTs. They haven't seen the utility because it isn't there. It's not in their face. The only NFTs they see are like cartoons and shit. Those people need to be exposed. And once they are, NFTs are going to explode in a way we can't even imagine. So how are they going to get that exposure? How do we? How do you get NFTs in front of all those people and have them look at it as like, oh, well, okay, I thought it was kind of cartoon monkey, but I see that it's actually this other type of tech that maybe I can apply to what I'm doing. We need that moment. I think it's going to come through mass retail. Speaking of adoption, Gucci has announced that they're going to take payments with crypto in their stores. Same with Equinox Gym, if you've ever been to an Equinox, if you're the kind of person who goes to Equinox, you're going to be able to pay in crypto soon. I saw people buzzing on the weekend on Twitter that Starbucks, who has announced that they're bringing tons of, and they're going to be making NFTs, are going to be on flow. That's exciting. This is what the Starbucks blog post said, like, I think it was like last week when they put it out. We plan to start with our first NFT collection, membership and community, later this year based on coffee art and storytelling. It'll come with a host of unique experiences and benefits worthy of a Genesis NFT collection from Starbucks. And this first collection will form the core digital community and backbone against which we hope to build future collections and collaborations 
all building on the same new ecosystem. Starbucks has 32,600 plus locations worldwide. Starbucks does not lightly go into a trend like this and say stuff like that. Starbucks rarely fucks up with their business dealings. As do any of the brands that have incredibly loyal fan bases, customer bases like Starbucks, Apple, Lululemon, those types of crowds. In NFTs, nobody has nailed mass retail, not even close. And we might be in a lull right now. And yeah, of course, some brands have gotten out there. Of course, we always talk about brands. We work with some of them. But I think in the real t- retail world, there are people that think way longer term than what we have right now in NFTs. They're going to make sure that everything you buy comes with an NFT. Everything you do, those NFTs that you get will do more than the current ones, and they're also going to be forced upon you. You won't have a choice to, but to get this NFT. Like I said a few weeks ago, and all the time, the public hates NFTs. There's a stat going around that NFTs are down 92% from their peak. A stat that people love. They, the, the, the haters love it. Even when you see it, like people talking about on Reddit or Twitter, you can feel them licking their lips as they're typing. They're like, mm, NFTs are down. Yes. You can feel that. Especially like the gamers and like content media outlet kind of people. But the people who control the bricks and mortar stores, they're the true brand builders. And they're preparing their assault here on NFTs. They're coming. And we won't have a choice. These NFTs that we get through mass retail, they won't necessarily get us rich like PFPs if you got it at the right time. They won't make people fortunes, but they will definitely give millions and millions of people their very first NFT. So that, just like crypto's takeover of our financial system, is inevitable. So what's the conclusion here? Long term, well, there's no doubt NFTs and crypto will make it, right? Absolutely. The tech is there. I agree. I don't don't even know if I'm like paraphrasing somebody right now, but I really do think so. The deck is great. Come on. We'll totally make it. Absolutely. The short term, yeah, (laughs) we might be fucked. But if we are, it's for the best. I think. that is going to do it for us today folks as usual thank you for listening and also welcome to some of our new listeners especially people from the jump community you guys have been giving us great support uh, as for after last week's podcast so welcome to you guys and as usual shout out to all our first mint day ones and everybody else listening so we will see you next time on the first mint